As Elon Musk touts driverless robo-taxis in Austin, federal regulators are investigating whether the system it calls full self-driving is dangerous, even with a human behind the wheel. That's after a fatal crash in November 2023 involving a driver using the system. Bloomberg is publishing images and partial footage of that crash for the first time. We should warn the audience the content you're about to see, which Bloomberg News obtained via a public records request, may be disturbing to some viewers. A Tesla Model Y with full self-driving engaged round the curve at highway speed. The sun was low, the visibility was poor, the car didn't stop. Moments later, the Tesla using FSD hit 72-year-old Jonah Story, who was standing helping direct traffic at the scene of an earlier crash outside of Phoenix. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Bloomberg's Craig Trudell, who broke the story with Donna Hole, joins us now for today's Bloomberg Big Take. And I think that the most important question, the question that we are getting most, is why is it important that we release the details of a crash that happened in November of 2023? Craig. Yeah, th there's a lot of uh, pushback on that, you know, uh, for, for the obvious reasons of, yeah, it's it's uh, now June 2024, right? And and yet, uh, what makes this 2025 crash uh, very even. significant, <laughs> uh, excuse me, 2025, what makes this crash very significant uh, for Tesla is the fact that, uh, that this is something that led to a federal investigation. This investigation is ongoing. And this this speaks to the sort of complexities of, of the way that the U.S. has approached regulating this technology, right? I think when you listen to Elon Musk talk about his, his driverless ambitions, he talks about, you know, regulatory approval and sort of gives this impression that there are these hurdles that, that Tesla needs to, to clear. As long as you're making your cars with things like steering wheels and and uh, you know other uh, other uh, components that a nor sort of quote unquote normal car has, you can put a, a car on the road today and and say we think this is ready to be driverless. NHTSA doesn't have to say you know safe or unsafe, thumbs up or thumbs down. And you know what they what they are doing is uh, picking up on crashes that are reported like this one. Uh, picking out uh, patterns in them. In this case, it, uh, this crash, along with some others, uh, you know, there were con consistencies in terms of conditions that the system seems to have trouble dealing with. And NHTSA is saying, look, we need to investigate this and whether or not your system is, is safe in these conditions. And that is a risk for investors and obviously, you know, worthy of, of reporting, you know, putting aside the mm -hmm. fact that uh, you know, this is a, a, a tragic situation and, you know, 40,000 people you know, die on U.S. roads every year, much as yeah. that's a, a worthy ambition to try and change that if you're Tesla. Uh, you know, it, it's rare that we look at, at those deaths as closely as, as we had the opportunity to here. It's emotional for 71-year-old Jonas Story's family. It is for Carl Stock as well, who is the Tesla driver. Craig, Push us forward, though, on the technology front here, though, because there are key differences between, for example, LiDAR with Waymo and what Tesla has been using and is, is in any way an interpretation as the technology and how it reacts to low sun and certain of those themes that you're seeing among these crashes. Yeah, that's a really key aspect of this story because, uh, you know, Elon Musk has, has sort of taken this view that uh, all Tesla needs is, is cameras, that uh, it doesn't need more expensive radar and, and even more expensive LiDAR sensors. And he, he's kind of out on a limb in this regard. Uh, Waymo has a very different approach. Uh, they, of course, uh, you know, offer a system that does not have to be supervised, whereas full self-driving uh, to this point needs to be to be supervised by a human. And uh, Waymo, uh, because it's offering that level of, of capability and taking that approach of we want to put cars on the road without anybody behind the wheel, they, they have a much more robust, much more expensive sensor set. And I, I think, you know, part of, uh, of the uh, sort of question here is, you know, is, is there uh, sort of a, a safety shortcoming if you're relying on, on these cameras, especially in conditions like this one? You can see from the video 
footage that it's quite hard uh, you know, to, to see what's ahead from, from the cameras on the front of this Model Y. And you really don't see the, the pedestrian uh, who, who was tragically killed until the very last moment. Craig Trudell, phenomenal reporting. We thank you for bringing it to us. Now more on Tesla right now and the fundamentals of the business. Let's talk about the shipments from its China factory. They fell for an eighth straight month. This is CEO Elon Musk pledges to renew his focus on the automaker, of course. Now the EV maker shipped about 61,000 Model 3 sedans and Model Y sport utility vehicles from its Shanghai plant in May. That's down 15% from the same time last year. A slump that contrasts with the robust nationwide sales of new energy vehicles, including both EVs and hybrids, Ed. 